Hi, Boss Canada. My name is Gloria Mann, and you're watching 10 Questions. Oh, there's my beautiful child. I'm here to actually interview you. For what? Uh, for e For e they, they hired me to interview me. So, you little bugger. I was outside for literally an hour. hour. Why, why didn't I know that? <laughs> because we wanted to surprise you with the interviews. How happy am I that you're here? I'm very happy. I mean, I wanted to come and hang out with you a little bit. Uh, all right, enough about me. Let's talk more about me. <laughs> so, uh, my name is Stephen Mann. We are here today with Gloria Mann, and this is called 10 Questions for Casting Directors. So, um, we're going to start with question number one. What was your journey to becoming a casting director? My need to support my children. Um, I didn't have a great education. I um, worked for an accounting office. Um, I decided I wanted to be an actress and I called a uh, character's agency. I had a relative that was a, an agent there and uh, told him I wanted to be an actress and of course he started to laugh but I went down there and he said okay I had pictures done and uh, I went out for my first audition for Carling Beer and I got it. And I went to set and I did the commercial and the most wonderful director by the name of Bob Schultz came over to me and said, you're a cute little girl but you can't act. So why don't you come to my office and work in my office? And that's how it started. That's always very encouraging as a young actress to be told you can't act. That's I know. really the best thing. <laughs> so what do you actually love about casting? Well, I really love the actors. Um, I get so impressed with how hard they work and how much they want it. Not all of them. I mean, cream rises to the top like in every profession. Some of these actors just blow me away, these non-union actors that come into my workshop and show me what they can do and I'm saying, I'm scratching my head saying, why aren't they more successful? They are so good, as good as any other union actor. Why are they not getting union jobs? Why? Well, okay, cool. Um, what advice would you give to uh, perspiring actors? Aspiring, aspiring. Aspiring. My whole thing is classes. You need to take classes. You cannot compete in your age range unless you know what you're doing. You have to be able to walk into an audition with confidence. And the only way you get confidence is by knowing what to do. And how do you learn that? You take classes. There are amazing coaches in this city. Tons of them. All you have to do is Google Toronto coaches and there's tons of them. What advice would you give to stage moms and stage dads? Oh yeah. Well I don't have that so much in series but I had that pretty bad in uh, commercials. Um, I guess we all see our kids as being the best of the best and uh, sometimes mom get, moms get overzealous and uh, they get too involved. I think kids like to just be quiet, do their job. They get very embarrassed when their parents get overzealous. They just want to have fun. And I keep telling the parents, don't ask them what they did in the audition. They're kids. They don't know. Just tell them, have fun. And when they come out, did you have fun? Don't question them. What is the biggest mistake that performers make when they audition? From your experience? Being too overconfident. Um, uh, coming in and thinking they know more than the director and they don't, like we saw it today in the workshop. I'm teaching them or I'm trying to teach them what to do, but they still do their own thing. There's a certain way of auditioning, there's a certain way of um, 
influencing influencing a director to like what you're doing. Um, <coughs> But, you know, you learn all that with taking classes from a good coach. You learn all that, I think. In your opinion, how important is, for, is it for an actor to have a demo reel? It's very important for, uh, for me, for series, uh, because sometimes um, I get actors that are suggested to me, and I don't know them. I don't know everybody in the city, but I like their look, and with my... Um, uh, series I'm matching people so if I, I see a picture and I I don't know who they are I, I'd like them to send me a demo reel so that I get an idea of what they're capable of doing if there's an actor out there that hasn't ever auditioned for you which is probably very few uh, what what could they do to to get in front of you when I get suggestions and I only bring in six to eight people a category I look at a resume. I don't look at what they've done. That doesn't interest me. I look at what training they've had. Because if they have good training, I know they're serious because it costs money. Um, tell me that question again. <laughs> On a scale of one to 10, what would you rate my sex appeal? Oh, you're definitely a 10. Okay. You're my son. <laughs> so uh, the, the question was, uh, is, as far as any actor that hasn't been in front of you, what can they possibly do to change that? Um, is, is it stalking? Is it? No, I mean, I've got people stalking. It will take that out, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, what, what, what I, I think is, you know, your agent suggests you. <clears throat> and with my work, I'm doing lookalikes almost. I have to match a face. Um, and if I think you match, and I hit on your name, and your resume comes up, and you've done some serious um, work with a good coach, I'll bring you in. I'll bring you in. Okay, in your opinion, how important is it for an actor to be on a top, within a top-tier agent? Like, is that, uh, you know... I don't look at the agents. When I get the, the suggestions in, I could get 50 suggestions for one category. I don't go down and look at the agents. I hit on those 50 people and I find who I think are best. It doesn't matter who the agent is, I don't care. Okay, in the summertime, when you see me in a tank top. I think you're gorgeous. Really? Yes, you're my child. Look at, don't we look alike? <laughs> All right, what would you like to see the Canadian entertainment industry do differently in order to grow? What I would like to see, and I could get into trouble for saying this, is some of the casting directors look at some of the non-union people because they are amazing. They are doing my shows, Discovery, Sci-Fi, History Channel, American Channels. They love our non-union people. They're not getting an opportunity. I don't know why, but this is been going on forever. I mean, people like myself and my son, we don't care, union, non-union. We want to give everybody an opportunity. And well, I think what it comes down to is we want the best performers, period. And there are a lot of wonderful non-union performers that are not getting an opportunity. That bothers me a lot. In the industry, you know, and in life, we all have mentors, people that have given us hope, perspiration, and the drive to keep going. Who are your mentors and why? You know, that's a question that I can't even answer because I'm older than all the mentors. Um, you know what keeps me going is my love for the industry, um, my being accepted, my being 75 years old and still working all the time, the people at my production houses, especially Cream, that believe in me, they, they just they just give me life. I mean, there's very few casting people out there that are my age and do as much work as I do. Uh, Cream Productions has been, they've just kept me going. They are so amazing and they treat me like family. I'm a supplier. I don't work directly for Cream. I can work anywhere. But they call me part of their family. They're, it's amazing. And uh, you give me a lot of hope, Stephen. I give you hope? Yes, you do because I'm going to cry. No, 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 no. You're, um, 
you just make me very proud of who you are and uh, how you've taken over this and how you've accept you're accepted in the industry and um, it's just amazing for me um, it's it's just I can't, I can't believe that you have done what you've done um, that you have taken to this I remember at the beginning you really didn't even like it I didn't. and look at what you've done and the people who call me and say my god your son he's so amazing don't you cry because you're making me cry no let's not cry this is not the view this uh, is 10 <laughs> questions for casting directors and the way he treats people and everybody loves him and people tell me what did you do i said i don't know that i did anything he just is who he is what do you feel is your strongest asset as a casting director my experience uh, my age, I've been around a long time, I've seen a lot of changes. Um, I think I have a really good eye. Uh, I never have to recast anything. We don't even have callbacks. We always have an extra day for callbacks. We never have callbacks. Um, I just, for some reason, and I guess my son is the same, we just sort of pick out the people for some reason. We just get the people. I bring in six or eight people a category and I never have to redo it ever so based on all the things you've been through in your life and how you got here and how you started with this and then you went away from it for a few years if you could do it all again is this a profession you would have chosen for yourself yes I feel that I'm right for this industry I feel that I'm fair um, I love the actors uh, I try my best to give everybody um, a chance. Uh, I don't send anybody away. I read all, I read every resume. Um, it takes me a long time to prep a job because I, I, I just don't, it, it's like in, sometimes in commercials, you know, you, you know the people and you know that they can do the job and they have a really good look. I need to have an actor. So I have to read resumes and I do. I mean sometimes I'm up to one, two in the morning reading resumes because my directors are, just because they're non-union jobs, we have people like Tim Wallatiak from May Day. We have Mark Menge from May Day. Um, I, I did American Lawman with him. We have Brian Rice, who just did A World Without Canada. We have Rob Wilson, who did Civil War. We've got amazing directors. Just because it's non-union doesn't mean these directors aren't great. I've got to put good people in front of them, because they know the difference. Mm -hmm. They do know the difference. And just last question, because I mean, I know this from my own experience, there's, I mean, I'm doing commercials, I'm more of a volume casting place because we always have to bring in a lot more people. But I find that using social media, everybody's using social media, do you find that people will be submitting to you from Facebook that are unrepresented that actually book jobs? Yes, yes strange especially for my stuff I mean we had an incident today um, a little girl saw something on eBoss and um, eBoss always says if you have an agent let your agent know she sent me something as well as sending the agent I gave her an audition but then the agent gave her an audition the next day but I had it was already bringing her in because I didn't know she had an agent until she read more of uh, eBoss's stuff. She just booked four days on Fear Thy Neighbor. She was here today in the workshop. You heard her. I have a lot of people on my shows with no agents. Okay, and last question. Are you currently on Tinder? <laughs> you know, I did a... Uh, I did, you don't even know what Tinder is. I do. You I did do. the commercial for Tinder. Oh, okay. And... Um, <laughs> I did the commercial for Tinder. Do you have a profile? And if so, now is the time to <laughs> If you want, a, you know, a, a, a veteran <laughs> casting director that makes a kick-ass chicken soup, swipe right? Is it you swipe right if you like the person? I'm not on Tinder. I don't know. All right. So from now on, if you see Gloria Man on Tinder within your kilometer radius, <laughs> swipe right. Dad? Dad? Do you want to ask me any questions, just quickly? Is there anything that you want to ask me? What you like best about this. <clears throat> what I like best about casting? Yes. I like the people that I work with the most. That's, to me, the best thing about casting. And that goes from my team uh, here at Man Casting to the actors, to the producers, to the directors, to the agency, 
I get to work with a lot of really cool people and I've made a lot of really strong relationships. Um, I don't think many people grow up wanting to be a casting director. It's not one of those things that you aspire to be. I think a lot of us who are in it somehow fell kind of ass backwards into it by a different set of circumstances. Right. Um, but you know, like I've always said this on many interviews, um, like what you do, love who you do it with. And I'm very lucky to, to be able to say that. Yeah, well, I'm really very proud of you, Stephen, and, and it's not, I'm not, I, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not patting again. you on the back. No, I'm not. I'm not patting you on the back because if I was a client, I would feel very comfortable using you as a casting director because of what you do, how you do it, how fair you are, and how you know all the talent. Well, you know, but here's the funny thing, and this goes with life as well, and when you were in the commercial world and you were working a lot doing commercials, Casting is subjective, but the relationships and the business is very subjective. You know, there are some people that really like working with me. Um, there are some people that don't. And that's not because of you do a bad job. That's just about, it's, we're in a business that's really cultivated by relationships and how you gel with certain people. And, you know, I'm a service provider like you are, so we always want to make other people happy. And just in life, you know, sometimes we, we meet people that we feel really connected to, where we really enjoy their energy. Uh, and some people, we don't. So there are people that really don't necessarily want to work with me. And that's not because I've done anything wrong or, or whatnot. Sometimes things happen on a job and you have no control over. But when it comes down to it, it's really about relationships. Yes. And it's the same with, with, with me too in my long format. I mean, I have the best relationship at Cream. Um, you know, I, I was just called it by another production house that I'm going to do a job series with. Um, I've been called by a, a company in the UK. I'm very well known in the UK. I mean, it's the craziest thing. I, you, know, you know, but I think what what bothers me a little bit is that. I hate when people call me things like legend or uh, the oldest casting director on earth or, or things like that. I'm just a person. I'm a mom and a grandmother first and I love the grandmother role. I have four beautiful grandsons um, and I'm a casting director. That's my job. My passion is my family. The other is my job. Like when am I going to stop? I don't know if I'm ever going to stop. I mean, I'm 75. I should have stopped already, but I love it. Mm -hmm. I do. I love it. And I love my family. That's number one. And even on Facebook, people say, the man family, they're so amazing. We're no different than any other family. We just love each other and want the best for well, each other. Well, it's also, it's, it's ironic and it's rare that you see on a local level of family um, that everybody has sort of kind of grown up in this industry yeah. and has, you know, has sort of done something I mean, look at who their father is. I mean, he's one of the top three voices. I mean, he's the voice of NFL film. He's amazing. He's got the most beautiful voice. Right. So this is, this is kind of all we know. But just to go back to the whole thing about relationships, you know, I think this goes for talent especially because you know, whoever you are around in this business, when an actor is in your, in your facility, when you're casting one of your series, you know, they have to be polite, they have to be respectful. You know, you always want to put your best foot forward and, and you know, it's not about kissing ass because nobody expects of that of anybody, but it's just about being pleasant and friendly and sometimes casting sessions roll late and there's certain people that, you know, they're just not chill about it. And like, you just have to make a friend. Wherever you go in this business, whether you're on set, and we've said this many times, you know, the PA that is on set that you may not like, you know, in four years from now will be the DP. So you just have to treat everybody it's with true. respect and it's all about relationships and making friends and networking and helping out and volunteering and giving back. Um, because like we always say, like we are a community. Like yes, this industry definitely. is a total tight knit community. There's a real incestuous vibe because we all kind of know each other and we all grew up together and we're all kind of like this one big family that's all just really at the end of the day trying to make a living. Absolutely. And that's what it's about. Uh, but we, one thing is we love people and uh, we want to see the best for everyone. You know, it's not about us, it's about what we can do to help. And uh, that's how I feel about this. It's not about me. I mean, I'm just a vehicle to get one, an actor from one place to the next. And when they get to that place, I really feel good about it. When I book some of these kids that come to the workshop, and I'm telling you, I book a lot of the workshop people, tons. Um, something, well, a lot with no agents. 
and then they get agents because agents see them. Um, eBoss has been an amazing vehicle for me as well. Um, and I so appreciate when you put out a workshop. Yeah, me too. Or just my jobs. Like I, I find amazing. so many people yeah. that submit through eBoss. Um, me too. Because I put it in my own casting group on Facebook and I put it in a few other select groups, but I always wind up getting these emails, you know, as seen on eBoss. So yeah, it's a great resource too. for actors because again, it's like you have to go you have to go and find the jobs. You know, the jobs don't come to you and their agents are amazing. They may not see something. Um, they may not feel you're right for that, but there are people that have submitted, you know, oh, by the way, I'm with this agent, reach out to them if you feel I'm right. And we do. Um, because, especially in my world, because it, it's such a volume game. Um, the one thing that I really love about, about you and, and that you've sort of passed on to me is there's a genuine empathy for actors. Yeah. Because, you know, acting, it's a tough position. So tough. It's a tough gig to make a living. And a lot of my friends are actors. And, you know, like I get excited when I book somebody on a U.S. national, whoever it is, but especially if it's one of my friends, because I know the difference that makes on their year and just Absolutely. how the bills and, and life just becomes a lot more manageable. So that's one thing I think is both of one of our, our strengths as, as a team here is that we have such empathy and respect for the actors. Um, yeah, so I mean, I think that's, I think we can wrap it up. Do you want to plug your Tinder account one more time? No, no but you know, I, I want to say one thing <laughs> that... <laughs> like my Tinder jokes. <laughs> and I'm a very good audience for my son. I mean, I think he's the funniest guy on earth. Um, I, I, I think that being in this industry for as long as I've been in this industry and seeing people succeed makes me feel very good. It's, it, this is not just a job and getting paid. This is a way of life. And this is my way of life and my son's way of life um, and his father's way of life. Uh, my daughter is helping me now and uh, I'm trying to teach her and she's learning and she's loving it too but she was an agent for a long time and uh, this is totally different than agenting uh, but she wants to do this and she has to do this and uh, I know if I pass all this over to Stephen I know he'll help his sister as well um, we're a good family and we're very well connected and we care we care about each other, we care about the actors, we care about our clients, we take care whenever we can. This is not about money only. This is not about money. It, it really isn't. It's, it's really about people and relationships and what we can do to help. And it's funny, it all comes around because these people end up helping us. I've also been working with both of my cats, teaching them the business. Because I, I would love, uh, I have a hairless cat that I think would be a phenomenal agent. Really good temperament, great eye. She only has one eye, so great eye. We're done. <laughs> Uh, you know, but um, look at my you know, uh, enough about no, that. But you know what? No, how many moms? No, how many moms no, can say no, in this industry, in any industry? Just wait a minute. Right. That their son has superseded them. But isn't that the goal? We want all absolutely. People, like I want my children to be more successful than I am. I want them to achieve more things than how I've achieved. How does that happen? That's good parenting. You could have come in here and pretend you were working. No, I didn't want you to see me at all. That was such a good idea. That was fun. Do you want to plug your Tinder account one more time? No.